And now, next up, um, I'm also very happy to introduce this speaker. I met her in Cambridge at our colleagues' um, conference at, at the end of April, um, Abigail Opong from Ghana NLP in Ghana. Um, she's going to tell us um, about um, to her um, or their um, text translator towards building a gender-inclusive Kaya AI for English or Twi text translator. Abigail is online and... Now, Abigail, yes, sharing your screen, very good. And then, once you get started, you have 20 minutes and then 10 minutes of Q&A. All right, first of all, thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to present um, my ongoing research here. Um, today, I'll be talking about um, towards building a gender-inclusive English to treat Kaya AI translator. I am an AI ethics researcher at Ghana NLP, based in Ghana. So in case you don't know about Ghana NLP, we are an open source movement of like-minded volunteers who have come together to help build um, natural language processing systems for the Ghanaian community and also African community at large. And um, for some of our projects, we work on getting more open source data sets and also open source computational methods. And um, I think mean, we are an army of NLP researchers in Ghana, um, who are working to make sure that Ghana is also represented when it comes to building NLP systems. So um, with some of our projects, we have um, the data collection, some parts of the data team where we um, work on collecting more data set to be able to build NLP systems for Ghana. And then we also have projects that focus on um, word embeddings, name entity recognition, and also parts of speech. And through this, we build the machine translation systems and also automatic speech um, translation systems. And we also have APIs that, um, I mean, which is open source as well for other researchers that want to work on um, Ghanaian languages to leverage on. So um, this is the first set was open source, um, which is online as well. So we worked on an English to Ethiopian tree para corpus where we have an um, English data set and also its corresponding Ethiopian tree and also cross source data from the community where we use um, Google Forms to help the people um, contribute to the data collection process. So today, the main agenda is to talk about um, gender inclusiveness in an app that we built. Um, that's the Kaya AI app. So I'll be talking about the inspiration be um, behind the Kaya AI, the previous version, the new version of the Kaya AI, and the gender bias research that I've started on, and then what also comes next. So the Kaya is named after the Kaya African mahogany tree which um, aims to sustain resources for Africans in the digital future as we are in now, and also a word for home um, in several South African languages. So with our previous version, um, we have our training data, and then we have analysts verify the data sets for us, and then we fine tune our model and then train these data sets on the model, we deploy the model, and then we have users um, testing the systems, and then um, users also suggest corrections in case probably there's a way that we can um, improve upon uh, from the translation that the systems give them. And then with our latest version, we're also trying to add um, more African languages apart from the Ghanaian languages. So we added Dabani, Kimeru, and then Liu to it as well. And we also um, compare um, our system to the Google Translate that was currently introduced. Um, and we find out that it's also at performs it and also faced with meta AI on Ghanaian languages. So this is um, how the Kaya AI app is. So in case um, you want to translate, we have the interface like this. So you just um, choose the language for, for instance, if you want to translate from Chi to English, Dagbani, or Ga. Um, you will be able to um, navigate your way around and then the system will translate it for you. In case you have an alternate um, translation or corrections, you, we have a space for you to also type in and then um, the team will take it into consideration. So this is also the automatic speech um, recognition where you can say 
something in Chi and then the system will help translate it into English or the way around. Yes, so um, for me, I got interested in the gender bias project when I was doing my thesis in school. And so I used the corpus that was created by the community as a member for this research. So after um, the system was built, I was trying to you know, test more language uh, sentences, after sentences from um, on the system. And then um, I realized that when it comes to of sentences like maybe associating he with a high profession job like engineer and she with an engineer. That got me also thinking a lot about um, what could have been the problem. And then I also kind of started testing the system, the Kaya AI system as well. And so here is from she to English, and then we have it translating as my brother. Meanwhile, in she, when we say Mia, it can be brother or sister. So I was also curious about why the system would kind of um, translate um, Mia to brother instead of maybe brother, sister. And then um, the other examples as well. So I also tested it on the Google. Um, translate system, tree translate system, which is available online. And it's also, I mean, gives the same thing. Um, when it comes to tree, tree is a gender neutral language, for instance, the or the first um, letter stands for he or she. But then we have the system predicting it as he. Um, when it comes to um, professions such as physicians, scientists, high status profession jobs. Yeah, so I started thinking about what could have been the problem. And then I found this um, interesting um, from my um, literature review. I found that it can be from the data, the annotation, the input representation, the models, and also the research design. So I started working on the data and I'm currently moving to also examine the models that was used for building the systems. And so first of all, I kind of um, examined the percentage of masculine sentences in the corpus that was used to build a system, and also sentences that have multiple, that's either a feminine or masculine, and sentences that uh, doesn't have either male or female um, characters in it. So when I um, examined it, I had, um, 11.7% uh, masculine sentences, and then 4.5 feminine sentences. But then the interesting part was to really go much deeper into um, what these sentences represent, and then I find out that, okay, we have um, he associated with doctor, um, father associated with doctor, and warrior associated with his and he captain and sister as nurse, just like the way the society has made it believe. So um, I went back to the problem and then, well, for the uh, for my team, the data team, most of them were saying, okay, it's um, maybe that because we have like low resource um, amounts of data, that might be the problem. And then also find out that there's a lack of focus on detecting and mitigating the bias in machine translation system application like the Kaya AI, which is focused on African languages. And um, efforts to mitigate biases um, had been really like extensively relied on the um, data set that are kind of large and also huge. Um, I think recently I discovered a paper from um, Uganda um, where they, are, they were also um, had a work on detecting gender bias in the Luganda data set, which was also promising. So in my work, I define gender bias as the prejudice um, towards one gender over the other, and then um, bias in the data set as the stereotypical association of words from um, this category, gender names, and the quality of translation with respect to the context of the language. So I also consider the quality of translation where we, when the sentence is feminine and then when the sentence is also masculine. And so um, 
I have he uh, heavily focused on the data sets. And so I tried utilizing the training corpora that was used for the Kaya AI and also try to augment the data at a certain point and also manipulate the data set to be representative in having more feminine um, sentences or characters. So I designed this approach um, for the data team and also the engineering team um, to really kind of observe the data set, um, the source of data set that they are really putting into the system. And then at the end of the day, they should also look at balancing the data sets. When I say balancing, I mean having both um, feminine and the masculine characters in it. And then after that, they could test it on the male sentences and also the female sentences to make sure that, I mean, it has the same quality because to be able to provide um, a representative system, that means that both genders should have equal opportunity in the system. So as part of this, um, I also visited some high school, this was my alma mater, during um, my work. And then I talked to them about these AI systems and how they feel about some of these biases and also make it like clear to them that these biases exist. Um, and then we should be aware that these systems that are coming up uh, these emerging technologies and all that would also have these biases. And so it became like interesting what I hear from them on some of the biases that they feel as a girls who, whenever maybe they are among their um, other male colleagues. And that also helped shape my um, ideas along the way. And so with the data manipulation, I started um, augmenting the data sets. For instance, when I see where there is he, I also add the she trying to teach the module to learn that um, when we have or, it also means he or she, and it's not only for he. And then, I mean, also when we have father, I also augment the data sets to have a mother part of the sentences, just to make sure that the data is kind of representative and so I had some few, um, I mean, success after <laughs> augmenting the data and then all that. So um, this was some of the sentences that were generated from the system. You could see that he's a boss, he translated this correctly, but she's a boss, he translated into mommy, which means mother in Chi. So um, after augmenting and then making the data more representative, I also um, got the system learning to uh, know that both um, can be both for uh, either a male or a female. And so this is such a like an ongoing way. I also got more interested in the model. So I was trying to see how the, um, the data set is represented in the model. So this is the word embedding of um, the data set that we currently have. And so this is a work in progress. What I'm trying to do is to measure, for instance, um, high profession jobs like doctor, when it comes to doctor um, and then probably uh, the distance between doctor and then a feminine character, like he or she, or even the Akan names that we have over here in Ghana and also try and then compare it after the data has been augmented, just to make sure that the model is also learning from um, the data that I was trying to manipulate to include the... Okay, so, I mean, apart from he or she or the English, I'm also trying to work on the Akan local names. I mean, when it comes to the Akan, um, there is um, their names for male and then female, which is uh, represented here. So I'm also trying to set the system on to see whether it's um, really representing um, both um, account day names in tree as well. So this is also like a work in progress that I'm doing. And I also find uh, inspiration from this work uh, first later which um, tries to, I mean, do the same for the Ghanaian language. For instance, if you are putting an English sentence, um, uh, maybe an intelligence, it will try to 
make you choose whether you are referring to a man or a woman just to help prevent the biases in the system. Yes, and my future works is um, working on defining gender among all languages that are represented. We have uh, more languages there, and then I'm trying to really work on it. Right now, I've been able to work on Chi, but then I'm trying to also work on others and also improve the gender representation because I have Gad and Bani, which are different ethnic groups in um, Ghana, and they all have different definition of gender. So I'm trying to really research more on what these local, um, I mean, ethnic groups define gender and how it can be represented well in the system. And yes, I'm also open for collaborations. Um, this has been an individual research. And so my collaborations would better help me to really do a lot. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you so much, Abigail. I really, I love this project so much. I think it's so important with the languages, the low resource um, kind of languages, and then also addressing the gender bias. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed. Also because, to be honest, I myself, like German is also a highly gendered language. And then DeepL, for example, I love DeepL. It's a really good translator, but it, it's really not good at this gender bias stuff. So um, yes, wonderful work. Um, Questions. Yes, Dorji has a question. Hi, Abigail. I want to say. <laughs> now, uh, uh, from the philosophy background, uh, I'm a philosopher. Okay. And I was thinking of the idea of conceptual decolonizing some of the terms. Okay. And, uh, I could imagine how it will affect your projects especially when you look at hermeneutical difficulties, translation from English to Chi or Ewe, mm -hmm. and in between Ewe and Chi, you know, some of the difficulties. Yeah. I don't know how you are able to solve those difficulties with that respect. Again, there are also new words being used nowadays, where in your context, in the Ghanaian context, it is something that sounds very is it offensive, to use some words. Uh, should I say some of the examples? Yeah. Something like uh, 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 sodomy, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. in, in your context, it's very difficult to accept conceptually that. So how do you translate that? Will you say trumu trumu? If you use the word trumu trumu, it sounds offensive as well. So I don't know how you are able to negotiate that. I'll be grateful if you explain yourself. Okay. So I think I got that question a lot, the second part of your question a lot. And um, for me, I personally look at the data set that was present, I mean, online that the system is using, which has only the binary um, parts as well, which is the he and the she. And um, it's not currently having the non-binary um, kind of um, representation as well. So, um, I mean, it's something that I'm also thinking about a lot. I mean, you know, the Ghanaian system um, and how the situation about the non-binary is also moving, but then I'm focusing right now on um, how we represent gender currently in Ghana, but then it can be something that in the near future I would want to venture. And then when it comes to um, the decolonizing um, parts, it's also something that um, we are trying to work on. So for instance, instead of translating from English to Chi or English to Ewe, or probably Chi to English, um, we are trying to have um, translation among the local languages. So for instance, Chi to Ewe, so it's like a process um, that we are kind of following. Yeah, we are not there yet. Um, it's been slow, but then we are trying to um, work on it as well. So probably by the end of the year, we should have um, something like that. And then probably I could look more into how um, gender is represented when we are translating among these local languages. Yeah. I don't know whether I've answered your question. Thank you, Abigail. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, then we have a question that I think goes in a bit of a similar direction from Angela Ndaka online. First of all, she also said, excellent work, Abigail. And then um, she says, in my language, there are words that do not exist in English. Do you have such in Ghana and how do you sort that out? Yes. Um, so with some of the words, uh, for instance, when it comes to some verbs and uh, adverbs, and then some artists, I found out that it doesn't exist in the English. I mean, the language we are still trying to discover ourselves and all that. So that's also another part of um, a research that I'm trying to focus on because right now it's more of English to the Ghanaian languages. And so when I get to the point where I'm working on um, comparing the local languages, I think that would be kind of interesting because we have. Um, words and also languages that are kind of local but not in English. So I'm trying to move more from English to more local languages. Yeah. Great, thank you, Abigail. Um, do we have any more questions from our audience? I can't see any here. Do we have more online? I can't see any more online. And you were really, really good with the time, Abigail. Um, mm -hmm. So I think then it's just um, up to me to say thank you to Abigail. Thank you to our other speakers. Thanks also to our wonderful audience and all the interesting questions. As Abigail says, she's looking for collaborators. So reach out to her and the other people if you have any questions. And um, then I can just tell you to go outside, have some lunch, enjoy the beautiful weather and the rest of the talks today. Thank you. Thank you.